folks. Good afternoon, or well, actually evening here in California. It is Earthmaster here on this beautiful, absolutely stunning, remarkable. What makes it so remarkable? Because we got clouds in the air. Anyway, it is September 9th, 2021's date, about 5.46 p.m. West Coast time here in California. Got some uh, moisture coming in, giving us a chance of thunderstorms tonight. So I'm gonna stay up and watch that here where I'm at. Uh, probably go be going live if that does uh, ring true a little bit later on this evening. A 4.7 earthquake striking around the Fiji Islands area, the latest in a cluster of pretty good sized earthquakes out there, including a 5.8 that struck uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, quite a few uh, deep earthquake movements in that cluster right there. Let's go ahead and check out some specifics of what's going on around the globe over the last 24 hours and uh that's not what i wanted to do let's go over here let's check out the uh fiji islands area there's that cluster of deep movement i mean this is a lot of earthquake activity um for a short amount of time within a 24 hour um, time period with some major deep movement i mean we're talking almost 600 kilometers below surface and in fact the latest one is further 618 kilometers for that 4.7 that just struck here within the last hour look at these look at these depths right here that's a major movement going on underneath this area folks um, i would definitely be on guard a lot of times when we see some deeper movement here in this area uh, a lot of times the west coast lights up uh, kind of what it's doing right now we'll get to that here in a second and also we see some further large scale uh, surface quaking up here along the uh, trenches and whatnot. Solomon Islands has been relatively quiet as well, uh, but I'd, I'd mar I would definitely watch these two areas right here uh, for a possible large-scale movement considering all that uh, deep earthquake activity we've seen. I mean, that's just a lot. Normally, it's only one or two, maybe three, but we're looking at uh, a pretty good handful of deep earthquakes. 618. Wow. I mean, that's just, that's crazy. Uh, moving over here to the west coast, we do have some heightened earthquake activity somewhat close to the Cascadia subduction zone, including a 4.3, originally a 4.4 that came in to the uh, Petrolia area in Northern California, the southern end of the Cascadia mega thrust area. No joke, folks. A lot of movement kicking up here along the uh, Northern California coast. Um, also, some further movement along the Blanco Fracture Zone just to the west of the Cascadia 3.2 and a little bit smaller one at 2.8 striking in those areas. So quite a bit of movement taking place here in the uh, uh, Cascadia range. Also throughout the Pacific Northwest into the Intermountain West regions and uh, California looking like some uh, uptick in activity. Uh, no major swarms in the Southern California region. Watch a little increase in activity along the Ridgecrest uh, Fracture Zone from a couple years ago, July 4th, July 5th earthquakes and also some further movement into the Antelope Valley area as well as Long Valley Super Volcano which sits down here in the Tonopah region seeing that uh, linear type uh, aftershock sequences that they've been seeing for quite some time. So Long Valley Super Volcano some microquakes outside of the caldera uh, scattered about in the mountains there also some movement around the Carson City area. Volcanoes in Northern California look pretty quiet a little bit of activity along the slipping or slip slipping. It's the creeper section, creeping section. <laughs> creeper. Yeah, I know all about those. Okay, a little bit of movement there into the southern, <laughs> into the San Andreas Fault, folks. Okay, we'll be serious, right? We got to be serious because this is some some interesting movement taking place here on the Pacific Plate. There is the activity into the Pacific Northwest, north of Seattle, and around Mount Rainier. Uh, Rainier. Okay, I keep I keep trying to correct myself, but it just comes out rain because I'm a rain lover, and we're, we could be getting it tonight. Rainier. I get it. Definitely. Um, I got a cool photo uh, to show here in a little bit as well. Um, so yeah, a little bit of earthquake activity popping up right smack dab at the crater. Look at that. Pretty shallow quakes as well. Only down to about 0.8 kilometers. That's not very deep, folks. Something to watch. It's right there, kind of just outside of the crater. You can kind of see that uh, dome crater right there. This is taking place to the north. Very, uh, maybe just a couple hundred feet there to the north of uh, Mount Rainier crater area. We'll check out the uh, seismograph stations from that area and also the Pacific Northwest Trimmer here in just a minute. Further movement up here into the Gulf of Alaska, where we're seeing that swarm of activity over the last week now. 
quite a bit of uptick here over the last 24 hours. Uh, looks like a 3.0, a couple threes in there uh, to continue that earthquake swarming along this area of the Pacific Plate and North American Plate boundary. Uh, also some movement along the Aleutian Trench region, 5.1, right around that area where we seen the large eight-pointer strike uh, some time ago. There's a movement south of Tokyo and also some movement around the uh, Indonesia area with the 5.0. Hawaii getting in on some further movement as well. Kind of interesting to watch Hawaii as, um, as kind of like a telltale sign of uh, the, uh, major movement along the Pacific Plate. Uh, Kilauea is pretty quiet, but we're also seeing a continued earthquake activity in the southeast flank region also up here around uh, Mauna Kea. I think that may have been from last night, I think, still on that, uh, still on the map. But either way, activity kind of ramping up there within the last hour on the big island. What do we got over here to the west? A little bit of uh, further movement into the, uh, what do we got here? Tahika stand, we seen that yesterday. Actually, that was, uh, that's Afghanistan region, 4.5. Also some further movement over here around China area. A little bit of activity in that region of the world. The Mediterranean, pretty quiet. Down here around the Arabian Sea, we had a little, let's see if we can get that, 4.6 near the Owen Fracture Zone. About 10 kilometers or so below the surface for that earthquake. Go ahead and check out the trimmer active, or the uh, earthquake movement into the Yellowstone area. It's been quieting down, folks. I know last night we kind of talked about an earthquake swarm popping up. This is kind of like the uh, residual quakes from that earthquake swarm kind of dying off here over the last few hours. A couple small little micro, uh, micro quakes within that region. Uh, but overall, it looks like diminishing earthquake activity into that part of the uh, Yellowstone Park. Let's check out the trimmer along the Pacific Northwest. Let's see what time it is. Oh, it's 5.30. So we may not... It has not been updated yet. It's got about another 45 minutes or so before this map updates. I'm guessing that we're gonna see a pretty significant increase in trimmer along the southern end of the Cascadia into Northern California region, back building up all this pressure, creating these quakes that we've seen over the last 24 hours. So uh, if it's significant, I'll do a single earthquake update on that trimmer if it is significant uh, and I think it could be considering it's uh, uh, producing um, some pretty good uh, release of pressure or build up of pressure up here along the Cascadia. Uh, what else do we have here? We were going to check out the Mount Rainier volcanic seismicity Rainier right here. There's that earthquake activity taking place just north of the region. Let's see if we can activate this one component seismograph station a little bit. See what's going on here over the past few hours. There's some of that earthquake activity being registered there. This is the microquakes that are taking place. I believe they were all below the 1.0 threshold, correct? Let me see. Let me double check. Let's see what we got. Mount Rainier way up here. Yeah, there are lower ones. Okay, so we had a couple lower ones in that region. Those are going to be some of the larger ones that you see right here. But there's definitely a lot more than just ones taking place here. A lot of small other um, very t tiny microquakes taking place over the last 24 hours in that region. But uh, it's uh, I don't see any volcanic trim or anything like that. Just kind of surface quaking uh, and some, some activity kicking up there at uh, Mount Rainier. Oh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Um, kind of uh, do, 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 do. there's the uh, movement into the Intermountain West region, Idaho, Utah, or not Idaho, but uh, yeah, I know Idaho's getting in on a little action. Utah, though, kicking up here against the um, front of this mountain range near Cedar, Utah. We've been watching that area over the last week or so for some for uh, some movement here. Looks like just about two earthquakes or so within or three within the last 24 hour period, but uh, there was a little pretty good swarm kicking up there over the past week. So kind of keep an eye on that region as well. Uh, areas down around Pecos, Texas, looking like it's subsiding a little bit in the earthquake department as well as Oklahoma. There has been a couple of small quakes around the New Madrid area. Uh, we got uh, 1.7 in Missouri and also a little, uh, what do we got here? What is this one? A little 1.8 near Black Rock, Arkansas right just outside of the New Madrid area. So a little bit of further movement in that region as well. 
Let's go ahead and run through uh, some of the images that we came across uh, from the viewers tonight. Uh, I appreciate uh, everyone sending in all their images and whatnot. This beautiful shot right here of Mount Rainier uh, taken by Peter. I'm not going to pronounce your last name, Peter. Please don't get offended, but <laughs> if I do, you probably won't send me any more pictures. But a uh, beautiful shot from Seattle, it looks like, Mount Rainier. Those are uh, lenticular clouds. Those are basically stationary type clouds that form over higher terrain. They can form over lowland areas, but most of the time you see them around volcanoes, mountain ranges. I see them all the time around uh, Mount Shasta here in Northern California. Also the coastal range to my west, we get a lot of those uh, lenticular type clouds. Pretty awesome looking. Sometimes they can kind of form a, uh, a pancake feature or a UFO type deal. It's pretty neat to see. Uh, Peter, I appreciate that image right there. Beautiful shot, no doubt. Also, we got a shot here from Tammy in, uh, of Dallas, Texas. Uh, this is here in uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee of the Great Smoky Mountains. Look at that, beautiful. That's one place I need to visit. I've never been out there to visit the Smoky Mountains. Uh, it's, it's definitely on my bucket list of things to do pretty soon. Absolutely stunning, be uh, beautiful view of the greenery, the trees. Pretty awesome. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, from Dallas, Texas, sending that image, uh, image in of the Great Smoky Mountains. Also, we got an uh, image here from Brandon Paul. Henderson, Nevada, we got some uh, smoke there from the California wildfires kicking up there on the sunset, it looks like, with the traffic in the background. Brandon, I appreciate that image. Thank you very much. Let's see if I got another one here from uh, uh, Jamie Fuentes, sunset in Southgate, California. Another beautiful image there, some clouds and uh, some beautiful color features into that sunset area. Uh, Going to do a little bit more uh, tomorrow, folks. Just had to really rush through this right now. But uh, keep sending those images in. If you'd like to get featured here on the update video on the Earthmaster show, uh, send them to earthmastermail at gmail.com is my email address. I'm kind of backed up. I got 81 messages still I need to go through. I will get to all the photos. That's a promise. Um, so don't hesitate to send in your photos and uh, for a chance to be featured here on the show. I enjoy all the images that everyone sends in. So, All right, folks, have a good night. We're going to jump off here. Um, we will, like I said, I will be back possibly if uh, we have some major tremor taking place along the Cascadia, which I think uh, is, is a high possibility. Uh, we got to watch the West Coast right now and the areas around Japan southward. With all this large-scale deep movement taking place, that's some major deep activity, folks, taking place in this region. So it could be an interesting Thursday evening. Have a good night, folks. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there.